to me, in order to outpace and outmaneuver the adversary, yeah. they can't be doing things with machines and we're doing things with humans. Like, we'll never win that. Even just from a cost perspective, right. even if we could throw lots of humans at it and do it faster, totally agree. It's not going to work. And so we have to get to a point where we're doing things that have more software capability than yeah. we have in the past. Right. In the whole security lifecycle, all pieces of it, in every pillar, in attack surface reduction, threat management, vulnerability management, incident response, penetration testing, the reason we throw software at it is because we need to get quicker and we need to get to scale. Okay, I totally agree, I'm totally on board, and we're not there yet, right? I mean, what I see is that software creates its own vul vulnerabilities, the way we develop it, right? Yeah. So that's another layer that we have to defend against. I see that software defined is not being taken up as I'd like to see it right. taken up. It's not really changing the architecture of the enterprise. And I also see that we still need humans in great abundance. So when are we gonna get there? How are we gonna get well, there? Well, I think the very technologies that are driving this immense um, human progress are right. the same technologies that we could use to drive progress in the security space. So software-defined data centers, if yep. uh, you look inside of what Dell's doing, they're doing a lot of work on software-defined data center. They actually have more software engineers than hardware engineers. Really? Yeah. So it, So you would know because you're part of the Dell family. That's right. right. That's right. So they're your, they're your cousins. They are. They are. <laughs> Step siblings. They are. Yeah. So, so I'm advantaged because I get to see what they're doing. Cool. And then I have to think about how to defend that. And so that software-defined data center is really important. It gives security people two things that we traditionally haven't had. The first thing is, is the ability to just ask the network what it looks like. So you see an attack, and you ask the question, is there a route to the, to the target? Is there a way to get that attack to get to that target? You ask the network, and the network will tell you yes or no. That's and how does cool. the network tell you that in a software-defined environment? Because it is software-defined. Because software is everywhere. Yep, and that's it right. is giving you the, the sense making, if you will, right? Yeah. It's reporting back what it is, where it is, exactly. and what, what it's seeing. Exactly. Okay. It's, it's, it's the traffic cops. It sees where everything is going and Love knows it. where everything is. So they, it, and like, we've always wanted to do micro-segmentation. Now we can get to a point where we can actually implement micro-segmentation if we knew what the segments were. Mm. That's the hard part. So we have to use software to be able to say, well, this environment and this environment never communicate or these two services communicate, and they communicate what I think is confidential data, so not only going to communicate, but we're going to make them communicate in an encrypted way. Right, or is it also looking at segmentation in terms of who has access to what where? Definitely, okay. definitely, right. definitely. But it's not just software-defined networking, it's software-defined compute. Mm -hmm. You see things like um, containers being used and, and workloads being moved all over the place. And it's software-defined storage, too, where you store things and what the storage look like. So how far are we from that world in reality? Where are we today, and, and where might we get to in three years, in five the, years? In the software-defined data center? All of what you just described. I think there's, in this industry, there's SOPA or like a lot of orchestration going on. Right. You guys have done amazing work around that, around that space. Yeah. And the, the reality is, is that's the first foray, as I see it, into being able to do automation. The problem is, is if you look at who's using automation, and what they're using it for, they're still not confident that we're going to automate something and not break something. Right. And so, for example, if you just look at incident response, the first step of the process is enrichment. So go out and collect all the information you need to assess this event or alert that you have to determine if it's really an incident. And that is very easily automated. But it's also read-only and doesn't touch anything. When then you want to react or respond to an incident and you look at it and you go, you know, I need to contain that machine. That's an opportunity for automation, but we don't see a lot of people doing containment with automation. They'll do detection and alerting with automation, but they don't quite trust the, the detection yet to be able to block. Yeah, right. Or they, or they just don't know. Right. So like at that point, you know, it, there's multiple objectives that need to be considered. Like, do, uh, does this block actually mitigate the threat, does this block take something down or introduce right. an issue to the, to the business and cause more problems? So in that process, effectively what, they, what needs to be done is, is we talk a lot about analytics 
for detection. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we'll also be talking about analytics for response, mm -hmm. like things that will be multi-objective optimizers and go, okay, I know all the things that are important. This is the action that I, the piece of software, is going to take. And that's the difference between software-defined and software-driven.